So just a brief update on my Tacoma. Right after I did my clutch, I went to start the truck and super excited to go take it for a drive. Unfortunately, the truck would not start. I ended up having to shoot lighter fluid into the intake in order to get it on. Um, I kind of messed around with different things trying to find out what was wrong. Eventually, from reading old threads on customtacos.com, if you have a Tacoma, I heavily recommend, especially if you have a first gen Tacoma, you check out that site, and especially if you're into lowered ones, but also off-road, it's probably the best form for it. Um, I know the Tacoma world exists, I like Tacoma world a lot, but it is very geared toward the off-road crowd and more towards second and third gen. If you are really into getting like deep knowledge on the first gens, really have to recommend Custom Tacos. Anywho, by going on that site, I was able to realize that there is a coolant temperature sensor that goes between the head and the firewall. Right, it's on the back of the head. It sends a signal to the ECU to tell it that the coolant is warm. If that sensor is damaged in any way, what will happen is the ECU will try to start the motor using a fuel map intended for a warm motor. Of course, that doesn't work well, which is why once my motor is warm though, it runs perfectly and I can turn it off and turn it back on and I have no issues. So it's very difficult to see this. I really can't get your camera angle. Easiest way to find it is actually, if you look at the main harness coming out of the firewall, there's a small pigtail, right, that hangs off of it. And that little pigtail goes toward that sensor back there. So you just kind of stick your hand in there and you'll feel it. Um, I actually ordered one from Toyota. I guess I got the wrong part number. I'll put the right one in the comments or I mean in the description for you guys. But um, I was able to go to my local AutoZone and they had uh, an aftermarket equivalent. I'm not sure 100% that it's exactly the same but it looks about the same so i'm going to go ahead and test that out um try to put it in there you're going to need a deep 19 millimeter socket and really to get around that crazy corner what i did was i have an extension i have a flex driver and i have another extension and i kind of just put this down in there and then i turn it from outside it's really the only way to get at it but i found um otherwise it's borders on impossible and I mean, you could reach it with your hands easily, but getting tools is in there is a different story. So if you've never seen this sensor, this is what it looks like. It should have a two pin connector on top and you can see I broke it, probably tightening the bolts to the bell housing that go up there. So yeah, don't do that when you change your transmission. Uh, I guess that'll be a update to my transmission videos. Make sure you uh, don't end up breaking your temperature sensor inadvertently. So here's the new one, aftermarket. This has the same head on it. Some of it seems a little slightly different, but I think it'll work. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in and uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna thread it in by hand first. And this is one of those things in life where you kind of just have to feel your way in there. found the port it's threading in no problem of course you want to do this with your engine cool right don't ever remove it with your engine warm because coolant will seep out of there under pressure right there is a little bit of coolant leaking out of there right now so i may actually end up having to add coolant to my engine shortly thereafter but that threaded all the way down now i'll use my little setup to uh, tighten it, and that should be that, hopefully. And uh, yeah, it's probably in the most uncomfortable position humanly imaginable, just in terms of access. So I probably have to come around here Try to grab from here. Try to use both hands for this if you can. All right. And of course, the uh, <laughs> aftermarket sensor it is not 19 mil, I don't think. It's a little bit bigger. Might be 20. 
I really wish that they would have been consistent there. That would have been a very nice thing for them to do. So I wouldn't have to figure out another size, or rather I would have figured it out before I popped it in. And now I have coolant on my hands. Fantastic. Always have gloves when you do this kind of thing. Makes your life a lot easier. Hopefully it's a 20. I don't have to reinvent the wheel figuring out what the heck. I don't want to have to dig in there several times with different size sockets. I should have verified that first, but oh well. You live and learn. Yep, it's a 20 mil. So if you get the, the Duralast one from AutoZone, 20 millimeter is what you want. So let's get this down on there. So I guess approaching from the front and coming in with two hands makes it fairly easy um, to get your, your tool down onto the sensor. All right, so I'm seated there. I'll come around here now connect this extension crazy what I'm having to do just to access this all right I've got my uh, socket wrench here tighten it a little bit not too much I think that should be it Hopefully I didn't lose too much coolant in there. Oh, lovely. Socket's still down there. Alright. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll try starting it without connecting the sensor just so you guys see what that feels like. And then I'll start it with the sensor. But let me turn let me open the garage door really quickly. All right, so here goes nothing, just for reference. You see it's struggling to start and that's basically what it feels like um, with the sensor broken because it's literally the same situation as not having one connected. So now I'm just going to connect that pigtail. And this is another thing that's probably best done from with you approaching from the front. going in a very specific orientation which I thought I had it cracked there it goes all right it's plugged in let's try turning the truck on and uh, hopefully this works and I can stop having trouble with this
big shout out to Matt at AutoZone. Um, got me the sensor. Really cool guy. I actually am friends with him on Facebook and also in the racing the cars and all that. So he helped me get the sensor, let me compare them and all that good stuff. Um, really happy right now. That means I can start driving this monster around. I still have to figure out the issue with um, the gap here between the booster pin and the master. But fortunately, because with this out of the way but still connected to the lines, um, I can't use the spacing tool. I'm just going to have to keep turning it down bit by bit whenever my brakes lock up and until I get it right. So I'm just going to keep doing that. I don't think it would be too big of a deal. I cranked down on it a bit. I'm pretty much there. Um, so once that's done, this truck is going to be 100% daily drive home, no issue, no drama, so I'm really excited for that. If you guys like this video, like this kind of content, feel free to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I post another video, and if you have any feedback, any comments, feel free to leave that in the comment section. As always, thank you guys for watching.